Hello friends, I'm Prashanjit, Customer Success Technical Architect with MuleSoft. Today we are going to talk about the Matrix Accelerator project. This project was formerly called the Matrix Framework project. Now this project has been built by our professional services team but now is available freely in GitHub for use. The Matrix Framework project is intended to collect and aggregate matrix from the AnyPoint platform and optionally load them in a visualization system of your choice. So let's get started. In this demo, we are going to talk about how you can use the Matrix Accelerator project that is available in GitHub. This project was formerly known as the Matrix Framework project. As you can see, the project documentation at GitHub has a rich information with the developed contents starting with a brief outline of what Matrix Framework project is all about and all the different type of matrix that you will get out of the box. You can run this Matrix Framework project in two different ways. You can call the API endpoints that are exposed or you can run it in a polar mode like a scheduler. Using the polar mode would be ideal to fetch the data in a regular intervals and push it to visualization system of your choice. You can configure cron expression to set the intervals. We will look at that later to see how you can do that. Using API endpoint, you can fetch the matrix as an on-demand snapshot of your utilization and stats from any point platform you can use the API endpoints to trigger a specific loader to push the data into the visualization systems. The project can be run from any environment and any type of deployment mode that is Cloud Hub, On-Prem, RTF. As long as the organization ID and username, which in case must be an organization administrator privilege, are passed, Data will be collected across all the environments and all the business groups associated with that organization. You can even run the project from any point studio and collect the information across the organization. Although this is more of an ad hoc execution than a permanent solution. Now let's look at some of the loader options. Many type of loader options are available. CSV, Splunk, Elk loader options are provided out of the box, but you can always add another loader options. We will look at this in more details later. These are the list of 120 matrices that are currently available in the platform. You can slice and combine these in many different ways to come up with the KPIs that matter to you. Now let's talk a little bit about the prerequisites. You will need a mule runtime of 4.2.1 or above. You will need a username and password of a service account with an org administrator privilege. Alternatively, you can use a connected application with the following scopes. To learn more about connected applications, you can visit docs.mulesoft.com slash access management slash connected apps overview. Now you can clone or download the project from GitHub. Once you have set up the project in the studio, as I have done it here, as you can see, you can simply run the project from the studio. This is just to confirm that the project executes correctly. If you are running the API version, test it out in API console. You need not to make any configuration changes. Once the project is up and running, test the application by launching the console. If you want to set up in a polar mode, that is, if you want to run this at a certain interval, you need to make some minor changes in the properties file. So let's now look at what are some of those changes that you may need to do in the properties file. So you need to turn on the polar enabled equal to true. And 
you need to also provide the frequency in a con expression. As you can see that my con expression is set up to run at every minute. So you will see that the project is now running at every minute. If you want the output in the CSV format, then you need to update the loader strategy to CSV. Now let's look, go at the console and find out how it looks. In the console, you can see that there are mainly three endpoints. One is platform matrix, business matrix, and SDLC matrix. Each of those endpoints have a post option and a get option. Let's look at the platform matrix. As you can see, you need to provide an org ID, username and password. So let me provide the org ID. I will provide the org ID from my AnyPoint platform for this example. I'm providing my username and password here. I'm invoking this method now. And as you can see, it has returned a JSON of all the different platform matrix that it is able to fetch from my org. So you can see that there are total three active members and there are some exchange matrix, some API specs, some fragments that has been reported. Now we'll look at the business matrix. For the business matrix, we need to provide some basic inputs. Inputs like API, historic time, developers, current time with MuseSoft platform, what is the developer current time for maintenance, historically and in any point platform. So I will try to plug in some values just to generate an output. Again, I'm passing my username and password here. So as you can see, it can it generated some output. You also have something called the SDLC matrix. So these are the matrix that are generated from applications that are outside any point platform. Applications such as Jira, Jenkins, Bitbucket, and Confluence. Now, if you have to integrate with this external matrix, you need to provide the certain properties in the secure properties file. So you need to provide the user and token for those eight SDLC applications like Jira and Jenkins. Now, we will look at the dashboarding part here. So we have provided some out of the box dashboards here in the matrix framework for Elk and Splunk. Here are all these list of pre canned dashboards, the code for which has already been provided in GitHub project. You can find them here. Now we'll go into my local Splunk setup to see how easily you can configure these dashboards in Splunk. So this is my local Splunk instance and we'll see how easy it is to set up. First, we need to go into settings and we need to create a couple of indices so that we are able to ingest the data from the matrix framework project into Splunk. So for that purpose, I have created these two matrices called matrix and platform benefit. Also, I have to create an HTTP event collector. The HTTP event collector when configured would generate a token which I need to use in my application. Once I've configured these two things, I can just go and start creating a dashboard. So I'll go to dashboards and here are some of these dashboards that I've already created, but let's just create one. So we'll go to create a new dashboard and we'll give it a name. For the sake of an example, I am creating a dashboard for access management here. So let's name access management. And we'll go to source. 
and in the source we'll basically take the source code that has already been provided to us in the matrix framework project in github here and we'll just copy paste the source code from here so we'll, we'll take this source code for the pre-can dashboard we'll copy it and we'll paste it in the source section of the dashboard in Splunk and save it and there you go we are able to generate the dashboard in Splunk based on the data that we have already ingested in Splunk so you can see some of these information are timeline information that is data that has been gathered over a period of time and some of them are kind of snapshot information now I want to show you one thing if you have the JSON already available, you can simply upload it here and you can also dashboard from the data that you have in the JSON file that you have generated just now. Now, I will also show you that I have a Jenkins setup in my local with some success and failure jobs and I want to report that into my matrix framework. Similarly, I have a Jira project set up here just for demo purpose and I have created some stories and tasks in Jira so that I'm able to report that in my matrix framework project. Once I've configured these, I need to share some of these properties in the properties file. So we need to turn on the SDLC polar enable equal to true for those external systems like Jira and Jenkins and we also need to provide the host port and path so I have been able to provide my local Jira and Jenkins setup host port and path here and once I'm able to do that I should be able to go and fetch the matrix from this external SDLC applications through my matrix framework project. As you can see in the API console with the external SDLC matrix, I'm able to fetch total failed jobs, total success jobs from Jenkins and similarly total number of user stories in the backlog and stories and issues from Jira. And there you go. You can also include your matrix coming from Jira and Jenkins into your KPI dashboards. Thank you for watching this edition of Friend of Max video. I hope to see you in the next edition of the Friend of Max video. Until then, keep connecting. Thank you.